anyways, the, the donkeys, the jackasses that can still talk are crying and complaining and repenting and the coachman turns into a full tyrant again and cracks a whip, if I remember correctly, and says, you've had your fun and now you're going to pay for it. So the cricket gets word of all this, he gets wind of it, he starts to understand what's happened, is that all these bad kids were enticed out onto this island so that they could be enslaved. And he's really um, taken aback by that, to say the least, but he realizes what's going on, so he runs back to find Pinocchio. And then the scene switches back to the eight ball bar where um, Lampwick is drinking beer and complaining about what the conscience said. You know, because he's kind of guilty and ashamed, but he won't admit it, because he doesn't admit anything. He knows everything. He's not going to admit anything about himself that isn't perfect. He's a real totalitarian in training. And he drinks this beer, and he's laughing about the conscience and putting him down. And then he says, well, what, what, is, what does he say exactly? What does he think I am, a jackass or something like that? Maybe that's not the words exactly. And then he grows these, these ears. And Pinocchio sees that and immediately takes a look at the beer and stops drinking it. And then Lampwick transforms one more time and his face turns into the face of a donkey. And he's laughing still. And then his, his hands, oh yes, he laughs and he starts to bray like a, like a jackass. And he's horrified by that. And then Pinocchio laughs and the braying comes out as well. And so now they're absolutely horrified. And, Lamplick actually figures out what's going on. He figures out that he's been tricked and that he's transforming and he's completely horrified by it. He becomes conscious of what's happening to him. And there's one particularly, I would say, dramatic scene where his hands have transformed into hooves and he's kicking and, 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 and uh, leaping around the room in panic. And he comes up to a mirror and sees himself as a jackass and then he turns around and breaks the mirror. And so. You know, he's self-conscious for a moment, then he destroys his capacity for self-consciousness, then he transforms entirely into a jackass. He's farther down the road than Pinocchio. And he comes crawling to Pinocchio to save him, and asks that the conscience comes back, so that he can get out of this, but of course it's a bit too late. And so then Pinocchio grows jackass ears, and he's absolutely terrified by it as well. He knows what's coming. And uh, the cricket comes back and... and guides them off Pleasure Island, and so then they end up on a cliff because this is an island after all, and they have to jump into the unknown right, out of this impulsive, adolescent, hedonic playground into the unknown and that's how they escape, so that's the first time that Pinocchio has to leave that, that this is the first scene where he has to jump into the water to make a clean break from something pathological, so tyranny, you see this echoed, you see echoes of this in the story of Moses leading his people from, from Egypt, because Moses is a master of water, right, he, he hits this, a rock with a stick and water comes out of it, and he's floating on water when he's an infant, and he parts the Red Sea, and so he's a master of water and transformation, and the Pharaoh is, and the Pharaoh's kingdom is represented as desert stone, roughly speaking, and so the idea there is that well, the kingdom is solid ground, but it can be a tyranny, and the water is chaos, but it can be the thing that you have to leap into to free yourself from the tyranny. It's not like in the Moses story that that comes easy, right? Because the, the, the Hebrews leave Israel, or leave Egypt, which is a terrible tyranny, and you think, well, that's good, they've escaped from the tyranny. But that isn't what happens. They escape from the tyranny, they actually end up somewhere arguably worse, because they're wandering around in the desert for 40 years. And that's, it's a brilliant element of that story, because it, it states clearly that when you go from a bad place to a better place, you go to a worse place first. And that's a great, it's a great thing to know, because it also tells you why you might be unwilling to take the next step. You know, you're aiming up, but to, in order to aim up, you have to let go of something you already have. And then that'll put you into a state of chaos, and unless you're willing to undergo that intermediary state of chaos, and you might not recover from it, you're not going to get to the next, you're not going to get to the next level. So, so that's rough. Well, so Pinocchio, he decides that chaos is better than tyranny, and guided by his conscience, jumps into the water. And then, we don't see anything happening in the water in this particular scene. They come back to shore, all half drowned, and and exhausted by their adventure, and uh, they go back home. 
And I think maybe we'll take a break now. Let's see, this is a good time to take a break. 1.30, perfect. So let's break for 15 minutes, okay? All right.